Tonight, what we're going to be talking about is the law of definite proportions and law of multiple proportions. These um, were very early on how they discovered compounds and relationships within compounds. Um, this we're talking about is about the early 1800s, late 1700s, when chemistry was just a new study of topic. So we've added on to this, but when they were doing early science experiments, chemistry experiments in particular, these were the two laws that really helped Help define the creation of um, atoms and the idea of an atom and the idea of a compound. So the first one was the law of definite proportions and this was named by Joseph Proust in 1799 and what he stated is, is that for any compound a specific compound they always have the exact same proportion of elements by mass. So what he's saying is is really for water H2O by mass will always have the proportionally the same percentage of hydrogen um, compared to the whole compound. Same with oxygen. Oxygen will always have the same percent by mass compared to the entire compound's mass, always. If it's anything, if it's a different percentage, it will be a different substance. So when you're talking about this, what it says is that atoms combine in whole number ratio, so their proportions by mass will always be the same. So you're talking NaCl or H2O, you're not going to have H1O and a half, and they will always be the exact same thing. So for sugar, it's always C6H12O6. It will never be a different percentage. So for example, water is always made up of two atoms, hydrogen is always made up of one oxygen. So by mass, the ratio of oxygen to hydrogen is always 16 to 2 or 8 to 1. So when we're um, looking at this problem, KCl is another example. For KCl, it will always have a mass of 39.09 to 35.45 for potassium compared to chlorine, or percentage-wise 1.1 to 1 by mass. What the problems that we're going to be expected to, for you to do during class is we are going to expect you to compare two different samples and identify whether it's possible that they're the same substance or not. And all you need to do is find out what percentage are each of the elements in the sample. And if they are the same, they could be the same compound. If they are not, then you know that they are not the same substance. So for substance A, what we're going to do is we know we have a 10 gram sample. Hydrogen is 1.119 grams of that sample and oxygen is 8.81 grams um, of that sample. So for hydrogen, we're gonna figure out what percentage of that 10 grams is hydrogen. So what you do is you take your part that hydrogen is contributing, which is 1.119 grams, and out of the total of 10.00 grams. Multiply that by 100, and you get your percent by mass that hydrogen is contributing, which is 11.19%. To do oxygen, you are just going to do the 8.8181 grams of oxygen over the total, which is 10.000 grams. Multiply that by 100 to get your percent, and you get 88.81%. Okay, so now let's try substance B. Substance B, if it was to be the same compound, it would need the exact same percentages of hydrogen and exact same percentages of oxygen. So for B, we know that the total sample is 27. Hydrogen of that is 3.021. So I'm going to do 3.021 grams of hydrogen over my total sample, which is 27.000 grams, and that multiply that by 100, and you get 11.19%. Then to do, um, that was hydrogen, to do oxygen, you are going to take 23.979 grams over your total, which is 27.000 grams. Multiply that by 100, and you end up getting your 88.81%. So because these two samples have the exact same percentage um, by mass of hydrogen and the exact same percentage of mass by oxygen, it would tend to think one would tend to think that these would be the exact same or they could be the same compound. If this, for example, had been for hydrogen had been 20% and 80% and B's was the exact same percentage, you know it would not be the same compound. The law of multiple proportions on the other hand states that when there are two elements that combine to form more than one compound, the ratio masses of the second element that combine with a fixed max mass of the, and we always use one gram, of the first element can always be reduced to a whole, simple whole numbers of one to three or two to five. 
So what that means is like, for example, CO, which is carbon monoxide, and CO2, which is carbon dioxide, because carbon combines with oxygen to only form CO and CO2. If we look at our mass, okay, by carbon to oxygen, we have 12 to 16, and then we have 12 to 32. So if you just kind of proportionally think about it, if we kept these guys, the carbons, the same, all right, and we looked at our oxygens, we would have 32 grams of oxygen for the 16 grams of oxygen for the previous. The only reason why I can go directly into that is because these are the exact same masses. So when you divide that out, you get a two to one ratio. So by mass, CO2 has two times the mass by oxygen being contributed towards it than oxygen does for the same amount of carbons, which was one in this case. So let's try to do another practice problem. In this practice problem, it says that the carbon compounds of ethane, C2H6, and ethene, C2H4, it asks, what is the lowest whole number of ratio of hydrogen atoms that react to the same number of carbon atoms? The nice part about this problem is, is that we have C2H4, which has two carbons, and we have C2H6, which also has two carbons. So we can directly compare. So when I do C2H6, Okay, and I want to figure out how many of my hydrogens can go. I look at my carbons, they have the same ratio, so it's one to one. And now I look at my hydrogens, if I could reduce that, this would be a three to a two ratio. So by mass, I would need three times um, versus two times, or the amounts, I would need three times the amount of hydrogen to two times the amount of hydrogen for the bottom guy. Here's a good practice problem of problems that we'll be expecting you to be able to do. So carbon reacts with oxygen to form two compounds. We've got this guy and this guy, okay? Compound A and compound B. It asks you to find the lowest whole number ratio of carbon that reacts with an equal mass of oxygen. So when we tell you that we want an equal mass of oxygen or a particular element, that will always go on the denominator for your first step. The first step, if we look over to the right for the strategy, is find the grams of carbon per one gram of oxygen. So whichever one we say for the equal mass, that is gonna be the per and where we're gonna divide it out. So for compound A, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the 2.41 grams of carbon and I'm gonna divide it by the 3.22 grams of oxygen. The reason why we can't directly compare this carbon to that carbon right away is because our oxygens are not the same mass. So we need to make them the same mass by making it a division um, where we're gonna make it per gram of oxygen. So when we do that, we get 0.7484 grams of carbon for every one gram of oxygen. That's a zero, by the way. For B, gonna do the exact same thing, but with the different numbers. So we're gonna do 6.71 grams of carbon for every 17.9 grams of oxygen. What that translates to B is that we need 0.3749 grams of carbon for every one gram of oxygen. That's the first step. Find the grams of carbon per one gram of oxygen for each compound. Check, check. All right, so now we need to do the second step. The second step is divide the highest number by the smallest answer. So the highest number is 0.78484. So we're gonna take A and we're gonna divide it basically by B to find out our relationship. So we're gonna take 0.7484 and we're gonna divide it by 0.3749 grams of carbon, grams of carbon. So what that ends up to be is two carbons. So what we need is, is it's got a two to one ratio. So for, compared to A to B, it's gonna be a two carbon to every one carbon ratio. Let's try another one, this time with lead. Exact same thing, but it says lead forms two compounds. So I know I'm dealing with, with oxygen. So I know I'm dealing with one type of lead and one type of oxygen, and then another lead and another oxygen. These are different compounds. For a given mass of oxygen, so by me reading that, I know that that is going to be on my denominator for when I'm doing that first step of that strategy. 
what is the lowest whole number ra mass ratio of lead in the two compounds? So what we need to do is we first need to figure out what compound A is, which once again, we're gonna take our 2.98 grams of lead and we are gonna compare it to how many per gram of oxygen. How you do that is you just divide it out and you get 6.46 grams of lead for every one gram of oxygen. To do B, all you have to do is the same thing once again, but what you're going to do is use the different numbers. So you've got 9.89 grams divided by 0.763 grams of oxygen. Multiply that out and you get 12.96 grams of lead per gram of oxygen. But now what we need to do is we need to compare these two to each other. So we've already got them both with the same denominators of one gram of oxygen. So now I'm gonna compare my big guy to my small guy. So I'm gonna be putting B over A, okay? So I'm gonna be comparing B to A. So this one would be 12.96 grams per, and then 6.46 grams. Okay, and when we divide that out, we get two over one. So there are two Bs for every one A of my substance. 